I'm Patrick Pacheco. Coming up on Theater All the Moving Parts, a conversation with actor, fight choreographer, and intimacy director Claire Warden. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Theater, All the Moving Parts. I'm your host, Patrick Pacheco, here at Shea Josephine on Manhattan's Theater Row, directing the spotlight to those artists who create the worlds of wonder we call the theater. Today's guest is Claire Warden, who is an actor, fight choreographer, and intimacy director. You heard that last part right, intimacy director. It's a relatively new but important position with the aim of facilitating, coordinating, and choreographing sexually charged scenes in films and on stage. Welcome, Claire, to all the moving parts. Thank and you. And there's a lot of moving parts to your profession. <laughs> yes, there are, and they're all moving a lot at the moment. <laughs> you are a co-leader of Intimacy Directors International, which was founded in 2016. And the five pillars of uh, IDI are context, communication, consent, choreography, and closure. What do you mean by con context? Context is about the story. What um, matters in the work is that we are craftspeople. We are artists. The actors, the directors, the whole ensemble are telling a story. And in the same way as we look at what's the story we tell behind a piece of violence or a battle, what's the story we tell behind a play, when we're looking at a scene of sex or intimacy or even moments of nudity, what matters for us in order to anchor it in a professional world and also in the craft is what is the story we are trying to tell with this moment of physical interaction. There are a thousand stories in hand, a handshake and uh -huh. that's just a handshake. When it comes to your profession, what are the qualifications? There's a lot. It's a varied um, amount of training and expertise. Um, for those that want to begin training as an intimacy director or, or coordinator, you have to have a movement background, some kind of experience in choreography and telling physical stories. You have to have experience as a director or a teacher running a room of, of artists and, and creation. You have to have uh, experience in uh, in acting as a performer. You have to have actually performed yourself. Um, you, we are mental health first aid trained. We are trained in, uh, in uh, anti-sexual harassment. We're trained in diversity. We're trained in sensitivity training. We're trained in working with actors with trauma. Uh -huh. um, and all of that as the basis and then it's an extensive training in the technicalities and the requirements and what is covered in working as an intimacy director. So it's a long training process. Uh, when we as the audience see a bad sex scene or an awkward intimacy scene, mm. why do you expose, what are the reasons for that? I think often it's because it's not been allowed the structure and the consideration that every other part of a play is. Whether it be because directors are, are awkward or shy about having a conversation about sex and intimacy in the context of the play, or whether they don't know how to or have been told that that's not how you do it. Very often what happens is that we'll spend weeks and weeks rehearsing every aspect of the play and, and we'll spend an hour simply on this entrance on whether you open the door and say the line or no, no, say the line, then no, no, open the door, close the door, say the line. You know, we spend ages doing that. But then when it comes to a, a, a sex scene, then they'll go, okay, go for it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and there's no conversation which puts our actors in a very um, sometimes dangerous, if even just anxious place, mm -hmm. right? Where if I don't know what's going to happen to my body, a lot of my energy is going to go into managing my anxiety, my fear, and my trepidation on what is going to happen in that moment. We're also just not being clear about, so exactly what does, even if it's just a kiss, what does this kiss mean? Who initiates it? How long is it? What's the, 
the level of intensity of it? How do we tell this physical story in the way that we tell the story with the text? Mm. One of the hurdles, one would think, or, or it's, it's twofold, really. Actors are used to being uh, taking direction, mm. being told to some extent what to do by the director. The other thing, of course, is that they occupy a world that is a little bit more open about sexuality in the theater. Mm. How do you uh, convince them they have a voice within this quote unquote permissible context? A lot of what I'm finding is that the way we train actors, and I am talking right from the beginning, in high school, yeah, the messages that are given to actors is that no is a dangerous word. Because if you say no, you know, the idea is you're being difficult or you're being a diva or they won't want to work with you again or um, you're not dedicated enough, you're not being part of the ensemble. Or you can be replaced. Or we, you, someone else would do it, so we'll give them the job, right? What we do is fundamentally in the training um, culture, strip actors of their basic human rights and their ability, their agency over their body. What I know is that when you give an actor agency over their body, when you empower them to be able to say yes and no to something that they need to, when you tell them what your body needs and what your psyche needs matters to us and we'll tell a story around whatever you need to, you will get more authentic, more risky, more powerful, more truthful performances from the actor because you have given them a structure in which they can feel safe and then they can just act. Oh. So I think mm. actors are generally, and this is a, that's a generalization, comfortable with physical interaction because it's part of our job. That doesn't mean that we don't have rights to the agency of our body. And that doesn't mean that everyone is okay with everything. It's about equity. It's about what each person needs to do their job best. And it's about take, destroying the power dynamic that's been set up, which makes actors' bodies the property of a director to do whatever they want, or the property of a celebrity actor mm -hmm. to do whatever they want, and to bring an equity to the room so that everyone is involved in this creative process as opposed to victimizing or using actors uh, and not caring about the damage that happens to them in the creation process. Do you find that directors are receptive to that message or are they sometimes threatened by you? Every director that I've spoken to or worked with, once they understand what this job is, has been completely won over. I think where the resistance comes is there's a lack of understanding about what our job as an intimacy director or coordinator is, and a fear or a nervousness that we're there to take over the process, to direct the scene instead of the director, to, to censor it or to you know, make it um, more prudish, to, as a health and safety person, um, to make everybody comfortable. Um, and that, none of that is, is what we're there for. I, I'll often say to my actors, this isn't necessarily about comfort because acting can be a very uncomfortable thing. You know, where, yeah. we, where we do the really powerful, risky, exciting, new stuff, that's uncomfortable. But what I want is for them to be confident in what is happening at each moment to them and with them. For an actor, I'm there as a collaborator. Mm -hmm. For a director, rather, I'm there as a collaborator. With my specific expertise, enhance the creative process. I'm there as a coach and um, an expertise on the physical storytelling, on the movement expert. In the same way as you bring a fight director in to choreograph the big broadsword battle or the slap or the martial arts fight, whatever you're mm -hmm. doing, you bring in an intimacy choreographer to help choreograph the moment of intimacy or sex. And what I find is that as we work with directors, everyone then gets to do their own job. The actors uh -huh. get to act, the director gets to direct. Um, I get to hold the room to ensure that we're working in a consensual way, bring that part of the puzzle in, and to offer advice and help in creating this story. Um, and they've 
always been thrilled at what we get out together. You are intent on bringing the best that you can out mm. of a scene, and you have worked on the slave play and yes, yes, Daddy. Did. You've worked with explicit, obviously sexually explicit plays. Mm. It's about mapping out the choreography. Can you tell us a little bit about how you went about mapping out the interracial, the in intimate sex scenes in slave play? Yes, it is partly about mapping out the actual physicality. It's also about facilitating the conversation and helping to hold the emotional and psychological aspects that come up in plays. Certainly with a play like Slave Play, where we have sexual violence, where we have interracial sex, where we have queer sex as well as straight sex. And the underlying story is one mm -hmm. of deep, potent difficulty subject for us to hold and for us to play. Jeremy O. Harris is an incredible writer mm -hmm. who is always challenging his audiences um, to really get to the truth of what they bring into the room. So part of it was about guiding the actors through the, the emotional, psychological minefield of creating those stories that we did, as well as the technical uh, choreography of exactly where hands are going, where the body is going, where we make it look like this particular sex act is happening when it's not. Simulation, we, obviously. Yes, yeah, everything is simulated. Mm -hmm. So it's those tricks and those techniques and that masking, which is similar to the fight choreography. How do we make mm -hmm. it look like he just punched her in the face mm -hmm. when they didn't make contact? What's the sounds? What's the body that we have to do? What's the motion? How does it make it look like I'm strangling you when in fact you're more safe than you've ever been. And that can be uh, true of Shakespeare as well as so the slave play Everything. in terms of strangling or Everything. anything. And you are a fight choreographer I as am. well. Yes, that's where I began. You talked about equity in terms of the actors. Mm. Um, how, how do you deal with a, a situation where perhaps one actor is willing to go a little further than another actor and is trying to convince that actor to do so? Communication. <laughs> um, it's not about convincing or persuading anyone to do anything. What it is about is knowing where, say if it's a partnership, knowing where two, both actors are, and then what's the story we're trying to tell? How do we tell that story? Here's the suggestion. You know, Can we tell it this way? And if one actor is like, no, I am not willing to do that particular part or show that particular part of me um, physically, then it's really f having the conversation, going into the awkward conversations and saying, great, exp let's find out exactly what it is about that th so we can be really specific about where their consent lies. And then, great, how do we adapt to make sure that the story is still told mm -hmm. while both people are in full consent and agency over their bodies? And do you find that same-sex partners, perhaps, are willing to go a little further than heterosexual partners? Not necessarily. Or it doesn't matter? No, it's, it's all about individual people. That's why I say equity as opposed to equality, because equality is the same for everybody, and equity is whatever each person needs in order to do their work best. I, I never um, inquire about the personal aspects mm. of an actor's life. So it doesn't really matter to me what they come in with, what they, they know. We're all acting and there's some things that are more comfortable and some things that are less comfortable. But we create that story together, so it ranges. And if actors are couples off stage and they're actually playing couples on stage, mm. does that make a difference? Not in the way that I approach it regardless of anyone's relationship outside, when we're inside, we're following the protocols, we're um, containing the work, we're giving the structure, and we're telling the story. In terms of consent, and if you can talk about perhaps some of the productions that you have worked on, whether it's Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, or Kiss Me Kate, or what have you, do you suss out, as somebody who must be in tune with the psychology of a person, when they're willing to do something by consent, but you know that it's pushing them too far, secretly perhaps, that, that it's, it's perhaps a subconscious fear, or even that they're not being honest about their level of consent. Yes, part of my skill is reading people's bodies, mm -hmm. and you will get a situation where someone will be saying yes, mm -hmm. but their body is saying no, or yes. saying yes because they feel they need to. It will take a long time in our society to help re-educate actors to learn what really is okay with their bodies. And because we get very good at 
that impulse, that this is not okay, impulse comes up and it shutting it down or moving it aside or not listening to it because that's what we we're conditioned to do as actors in our training up until now so there's a time of relearning how to listen to your body so i will read that sometimes or i'll read it in people's you know the people's language or the shift in people's um in actors um way of being that I will then question, okay, is this still okay? Has something changed? What's going on? Let's stop and talk a little more. I have conversations with them before we start, individually one-on-one, -on -one, so that I can establish that without the pressure of other people being around them and having to, to do what they think they need. Do you have that people do come around? It's never about, we're gonna get you there eventually. Uh -huh. But it is about, I have had, you know, a situation, and I'm not going to name it uh, yes. specifically, where, uh, you know, we've gone in stages and sometimes it's just great. We are just going to do the choreography right now without the acting, without the, you know, the engaging emotionally and psychological. We're just going to do the choreography and when we have that built and that is a structure in which you can be safe, then we can start layer in the acting and the engagement in what that story means. Mm -hmm. And we can build it from there um, so that it becomes filled as, as we go on and, and the, the structure becomes uh, reliable. If you do a play, a Shakespearean play, mm -hmm. or a restoration comedy, or Miss Julie, as you have done, mm -hmm. um, is it different in terms of uh, intimate scenes between doing a classic play and a more contemporary play that may be a little bit more naked, because it is contemporary, because it is modern. Right, I mean, the approach, no. The technique is the same. The, what we're actually choreographing, yes. Um, you know, for example, I did uh, In the Next Room or the Vibrator play. A period piece, very much, the whole story is about touch and free, sexual freedom for women. And so in that play, the brush of a hand is as intense as, you know, mm -hmm. naked s sex in a pool is in a contemporary play. As it, as it as happens in Daddy. In Daddy. Yeah. Right. So, so it's about understanding what the story is mm -hmm. and knowing what weight to put to physical interaction. You know, now in contemporary society, we physically interact a lot more than we did, you know, in the mm -hmm. Victorian time. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of assumptions about period pieces mm -hmm. and what we, you know, imagine was, you know, people never touched at home. You know, yes, husbands and wives were having all kinds of fun and kinky sex. Of course they were. So, but it's about really tying it to the story and, and the impact of intimacy so that we build the world of the intimate touch that is relevant to the, the, the play and the setting. I love that you've brought up the, the idea that just the touch of, and brush of a hand can be far more exciting mm. sexually and suggestive than sex in a pool. As Absolutely. You just put it. I mean, even no touch, even like, mm -hmm. you know, we will spend time building up tension in eye contact or lack of eye contact. You know, can you give us an example of a play that you did that in? Oh, I mean, again, yeah. that was vibrator play. In, you know, in the, the vibrator the, there's, play. you know, this between Leo, the uh -huh. uh, a man who comes to visit, and Elizabeth Givings, the, the wife, and just there's a moment where they're looking out of the window together. They're not even looking at each other, mm -hmm. and yet in there you can build such frisson and such intimacy and then the quick turnaround and a quick glance in the eye and that's everything and then where do we go from there and was that true of miss julie as well was there scenes somewhat similar to that um, in terms of building up the tension yes i mean this was miss julie this was the was a, a version that the classic stage did mm -hmm. which was set um set in south africa there was a lot more um Physical interaction. Yeah, I mean, there was very graphic sex, but yeah. there was also a lot of like out, open, released passion and feeling. Um, and so that's a different kind of intense intimacy, the intimacy of, of conflict and violent speech that is incredibly intimate in its explosiveness. How do you gauge trauma, pre-existing trauma, that an actor may bring to a project? How do you gauge that and protect him or her in terms of what they have to do in the play? It's a skill that I've developed over many years. Uh, 
I, again, I will never ask an actor, but I will always have a moment of, is there anything you want or need me to know as we go into this play, any extra support that you might want? Um, I can often see it in their bodies, you know, and where, where they're holding it in their bodies. Um, I can often, uh, and sometimes it's about just listening really actively to what they're saying or the moments that might be difficult for them as, as actors and, and just um, and providing a, 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 a stronger support in those moments. I don't need to know what it is in order to support them. If they wish to tell me, then that's fine. It, it remains confidential. Does any actor, does an actor ever balk in terms of saying, hey, uh, Claire, you're interfering with my process. You're interfering with my spontaneity. Acting is all about being in the moment and I'm going to do or I think I should do whatever I'm in the moment with this other actor. How do you respond to that if, if indeed you get those protestations? I, I mean, I, amazingly, I haven't really yet. Yeah, most <laughs> actors are very, very glad that I'm there. Um, that, you know, yes, I have had a conversation with people that, that aren't used to this and, and have built their process on spontaneity and, and, and doing whatever comes to them. I am all for supporting whatever an actor's process is within the guidelines of human rights and safety and, and healthy working ways. So I'm like, absolutely, I'm building this structure for you so that you can be free within it. The structure at the moment is that you can't touch here, here, or here on your partner's body. Um, in the same way as the structure for you is the lines that you've learned that you need to say. Or the structure is, this is the frame, this is the camera frame we're in, yeah? We're here to here, so, and, and if you move this far, you're off camera. Yeah. Or the structure is, you know, the sofa is there, the table is there, that's the edge of the stage, don't fall off that, don't fall over that, and go out that <laughs> door, because you've got to come back in that door for scene two. It's the same, it's just about building structure. And within the structure, when you know it, you have enormous freedom. I, I sometimes liken it a lot to Shakespeare. I, I, um, I'm an expert in Shakespeare and spent a lot of my life both acting in it and teaching it. And the verse structure of Shakespeare, I truly believe that because there is such structure in the verse, that is what allows us to go so deep and so powerfully into our humanity because we are held by the verse. So we can actually go further in verse work than we can in you know, prose mm. contemporary mm -hmm. work because we know we're held by the verse and it's the same thing. There's always like 10 or 15% of your actor brain going that's not falling off the stage and saying the lines and staying in camera and, you know, and remembering what accent you're supposed to be doing. And I say that is, that's the part of the brain that's also like, and I don't put my hand here on this partner or I don't do this or this is not actual sex with this person. If an actor is physically turned on in the middle of a scene, is that necessarily a bad, bad thing? It, it, look, these are bodies, and when you put, our bodies and our psyches are linked. When you put a body in a particular position, sometimes there are vascular reactions. <laughs> That's fine, there's no shame to it, that's not normal. We have various um, uh, modesty garments and barriers that help um, with ah. that, both you know, in, in all kinds of bodies. Um, whatever your genitals are, they can react. Um, a dance belt, for, for example, I'm sure is probably a part of what you're just discussing. Uh, right? Well, it depends on how much, mm -hmm. how much nudity is needed, right. but there's always, some, there's always some cover or something between bodies. Mm -hmm. um, and if it happens, great, then we just call, you know, then we'll just not very subtly just call a moment and you can, you know, take a break and, and let it pass and then we move on. Yeah. Directors often talk about a kiss scene. Um, and they say, okay, you're going to kiss here, but save it for the first preview. Uh, mm. Don't kiss until the first preview, if that's comfortable for actors or something. Would you rather that they rehearse it before the first preview? Yes, I would always rather that something happens before we get in front of an audience. Um, again, I wouldn't say, well, okay, we'll do the slap here, but don't do it till the first night. Because we just, you just need to know what's happening in the scene. You need to know how it's going to look. We need to know if we're telling the story right. Um, we need to be able to check in and say, that's a little long, that's a little hard. Actually, this sofa is too low and I actually can't reach up there. Yes, I, I, we always rehearse it like we rehearse everything else.
before the first preview. Uh, we have to wrap up, but I, I think that what we all bring a lot of baggage to sex uh, in the audience, to the theater. And it seems to me that you are in a position to help us gain a healthier view of sex and intimacy. I and hope. The, and the difference between intimacy and sex as well, yeah. which tends to get lured in contemporary society, especially with the Me Too movement. Do you feel that you can? Yes, I think, I think on, in two ways. I think, first of all, I can provide safety so that, and I hear this from many audience members that have seen my plays, the plays that I've worked on, they're not mine, they're everybody's, um, but that not seeing, seeing it and, and knowing that the actors are safe and consenting lets them as an audience relax and stay in the play as opposed to worry about the actors. I also think that because we're having the conversation and we're, we're, we're looking at it through an expertise eye and a storytelling eye, that we can tell much broader, much more nuanced stories of intimacy. So it isn't just cis, heterosexual, male dominant power dynamic sex, that we can tell all kinds of bodies and all genders and all orientations and all races and all kinds of people have many, many different ways of being intimate and showing intimacy and that we can represent that to society so that all of society can see themselves at some point and go, oh, I know that, or someone else feels that, or I wonder what that, that's like, or that didn't seem okay for that person. Have I ever done that? Do I do that? So it's a teaching moment as I, well yeah. for the audience as well as the actors. Absolutely. That's absolutely, utterly fascinating. I'm so grateful that you could join us. Thank you. And thank you so much. You're welcome. It's lovely being here. And thank you for joining us. I'm Patrick Pacheco. We'll be back next month with another look at the expert and singular artist who live and work only to astonish us.